All right, I've been finding ways to muse this alternate reality simulation. I'm quite fond of this one, mostly because it's difficulty level. It's not easy getting the job done in this world. So, the challenge level is exciting. They don't just bend over and let you, if you know what I'm talking about. It's a fight, it's a fun fight. Anyway, I have befriended and fanned a decent amount of bands from this alternate reality device. I have with me the band exiting the system. And we're just going to kick around some of the ideas that will be coming around on future transmissions. The idea in this next one is very close to home for the AR unit. If you're able to choose realities from a real reality, an alternate reality simulation, what would you choose? The perfect life? The perfect wife? The perfect fuck on the side? Or reality, reality, which both of them kick your ass and bust up your car. I really don't think that most people realize that they make the choice every day. Every single day people choose an alternate reality as opposed to what's really happening in the world. They don't even know that they're making the choice every day. They choose the created world, the manufactured world that's put in front of their eyes instead of reality. I definitely agree. It's the sad point in the world that you can actually see when you have the option to create that perfect life. What a screen can give you nowadays with the option to make this falsified version of a better life because you can't deal with aspects of your own reality because they're crumbling out beneath you as well. And then the whole truth aspect of it is it's all crumbling and we see it, and then some of us deny it, some of us see it right in front of our eyes, and I think that's what defines reality from perfection in the human mind. I feel like people, uh, they like the temporary, the, the, the unreality, they, they want the, the temporary fix because they know it's just temporary. Instead of dealing with reality, they choose to play their small little games and, and become Enraveled and, and wrapped up in this crazy world that we live in today. Ultimately, I feel someone picks their reality based off their point of view. And as far as the normal mental patient fan that I will come across that actually has an odd view on the world, and that actually synergizes this false reality in their head. In their mind, they're Superman, but everybody else sees them clunking their head against the wall. Everybody feels like they're a star with the rise in popularity of reality TV. Everybody feels like they're a celebrity, but really they're just a celebrity in their own mind, which is really just a form of control because that keeps people from focusing on what is actually reality as opposed to what you said, the manufactured created reality, somebody making a choice for you. Ultimately, I think it is an appeasement. Uh, the fact that reality can be hard to win in, particularly in this simulation, in this reality, reality can be a hard game to win at. And some people feel that they need to hold on to their winnings. And they want to send everybody else in a different direction. Whatever it takes to shut this dummy up while I go to the bank. But this is, the, this is what we breed. This is what, like, a photograph, a framework of who you are. It's not what you tell someone that defines you. It's what you wear. It's how you look in this pose. It's, I mean, it's all fake. I think there's a level of personal importance, and there's no particular level of a societal importance. Just like somebody that gets on stage and you guys see it, and uh, it's very prevalent in the music scene where they get on stage and regardless of what they do, they make a little trampy dance and shake their ass. They think, yay! Bullshit, I say. Did you do anything important? Did you do anything important at all? Did you make 
a contribution to this conversation of life, or did you just waste our time with drivel? See, that's why I feel like we we're, we're, we are relevant in today, because like we take real situations and real problems and make them, you know, personal and 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 for everyone to see. You know, we're not we're not holding back. We're not hiding nothing. We want we want everybody to be aware. I think this is one thing that is lost on our society nowadays. People want to be as sheepish as possible. They want to blend in. They they will want the reward of being like their friend. They'll imitate what they see. They become little imitation copy machines. When the fact of the matter, the extremes of reality and honoring the many branches makes you more of a human and less than of a tonitom. When you're nothing better than a replicating device, what's the fucking point? Honestly, people build themselves out to be carbon copies because that's the only way to be successful because when you take the originality, when you take the individual human thinking out of all aspects and you make sure that when you create one perfect design and it, it'll be just like you said, a temporary design, it won't be something that last something that will withstand the course of time but something to do people over the same way doing a drug will it'll keep put you in a comatose state of false way of becoming someone else well i i, I think that, uh you need to aggressively at that point also talk about the reinvention of the old i think it is awesome when you can reinvent the old and make something fresh out of an existing medium. Not the actual copy. The actual copy is stupid. But if you make a fresh thing from the old, uh, this would be a fact that all the Node fans would know, is that Frankenstein actually inspired the Incredible Hulk. You put the scientists who had the freak experiment bringing a monster to life. But also the uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde was also into the influence. He had more than one influence into a new character, making it fresh. Now, what makes Exiting System the, the, the fresh? What makes you the fresh? And we can also talk about who's getting a little unfresh. Well, as far as us being what's fresh, we're constantly evolving with the way reality evolves. We're always changing, we're bringing what's relevant in the world and putting it in front of people's faces. We're exposing the truth. I also think our message alone withstands anything that we do as far as from our theatrics to the live show in general, the message behind what we, who we are as people to what we put, you know, put out in our music or whatever is something that you know, it's not that it's relatable or it's relevant, but we're all human. We don't put ourselves out to be bigger than someone else. We don't put our music out to be bigger than anyone else's. But the message behind what we are putting out to people is that embrace who you are to the corest root and then show it. We're always pushing boundaries and, and, and trying to, uh, you know, express who we truly are instead of, you know, hiding behind, you know, you know, false realities and stuff like that. So I, I, I just feel like there's a lot of there's a lot of people and a lot of other bands, musicians that are just, you know, happy just sitting in their little uh, their little bubble. So I'm glad I'm glad that we uh, we decided to pop it. Well, I I feel that life is teeming with all these mass possibilities, and I love the variations of realities and also alternate realities, even within a machine. One of my favorite groups of interest are the primitives. I love tribalism and the beauty that comes from the most simplistic, crafted art that if you were given a raw item to make art with, what do you come up with? And I love the handmade, and I love the art made from scratch. I love face paint. These fellows absolutely 
hit a home run when it comes to it. And it honors, it honors generations, generations that came before that wore the, the war paint, that all this meant something, and that you craft, you know, this raw, dirty, dingy, but beautiful item with what you have to work with. And the post-apocalyptic look that you guys got, uh, can you give me any insight into how you came up with that and what drives it? Well, really, the look stems from where we see society going. We see us heading for a major collapse and uh, inevitable war. And the way we see things coming out is you're going to have to create from the ashes and the ruins of what we're standing on right now. And that's really the look that we try to put off on stage and, and let people know, hey, we're heading off a cliff right now, and this is what it's going to look like. We're going to be the band playing the apocalypse of America. You know, I feel like, you know, like what you're saying, this is, this is my war paint. This is, this, is my, this is my battle gear. So I do feel you honor the Misfits look a little bit. Absolutely. So it's all about, I do think, that you take what's relevant in your world and then you make something fresh out of it. We do have so many things presented with us. I, we, you are almost brainwashed media in some points. So it's, do you just sheepishly come up with nothing new or do you go ahead and say, what can I do with what is presented in front of me? Uh, honestly, I think there's people who drop the ball, uh, and Manson is one of those. He started off with something very fresh, very teeming, even though it was a reinvention, in fact, of Alice Cooper, if you ask me. It was a reinvention, but it was an excellent reinvention. He sounds nothing like Alice Cooper. Manson's really lost a lot of what made him great. Um, he hasn't been relevant for at least 10 years at this point and it's it's really sad to see somebody fall so far but at the same time you know trends come and go and we feel like we're taking the ball we're taking the torch the baton and we're running with it and we're basically smashing it right into your face you know, as a you know musician, you want to take into account you know you, re you respect other artists for certain aspects, but also in the same token, you know, looking at not only at their achievements but also looking at their mistakes. And this goes back to a lesson you learn when you're younger to always learn from them and also learn from the mistakes of others. And so even as musicians, seeing someone that was on uh, you know a really high pedestal, especially you know for me and you know definitely the other members. Um, you know, growing up, where he sat and where he sat in the media and everything, and then how everything just kind of when it became all about the individual and not the art, is when you slowly see the collapse, the, the spiral downwards. And I mean, you see where it's at now. If you, you look at the Manson token, you saw Manson the band or Manson and the Spooky Kids, and now you see just Manson and people that you really don't even remember. Yeah, he's he's totally strayed from uh, from what was the true the true Manson that we've all you know come to uh, enjoy. Um, he's he's definitely lost the edge. I think he's he's become so self consumed that he's forgot about you know his fans and uh, and obviously his uh, his band members because uh, you know to me Manson was a uh, you know, the, the original cast, not just Marilyn Manson, so. Well, I, I th feel it's awesome when you see, and, and this is going to be a personal favorite, and I'll, I'll use him as an example left and right because of it, but Danny Filth, who has had a highlight, he's had a high point, he's been on tons of magazines, and he's still relevant in tons of countries, and just teeming with fans with Cradle of Filth, but he said, you know what? Let me see what it's like to make something fresh again. And he goes ahead and makes the sideman Devilman. Some people are shocked. They're like, oh my God. He, he goes from Cradle Filth and makes Devilman. It's because he can. 
is because he likes the idea of doing something fresh, doing something from the ground level. It's one thing to get too comfortable. Manson got too comfortable, and it's obvious by the disappearing of his neckline. <laughs> Every once in a while, you got to push yourself to the streets, as it were. So what you see is not just a mirror reflection on top of the surface. I feel that every single time that a rock star that's out of touch, they look into the audience, what they see is a light mirror of themselves over top of everyone they see. They can't see anybody without first seeing themselves. They have lost the idea that they are part of a culture. They're part of a people. They become secular and removed and therefore unrelevant. It really is awesome to see somebody reinvent themselves because they want they want to stay relevant. They they want to be fresh like Danny Phil. He wants to stay current. So to do that, he has to create something completely new and different. And I have nothing but respect for him. I mean, you always, you get to a point in music and with any aspect or with any job, you know, once you climb that ladder and, you, you know, set your life goal or your goal in this career, and as you get closer and closer to reaching that goal, there's also a position in your mind that kind of kicks into play, where do I go from here? And, you know, as a musician, you know, you create the art. You have the option to start over, to build something brand new, so you don't always have to stay relevant to a fan basis, to people that you know like you for the first album, but only that album, so you gotta make sure that every other album stays the same. But if you wanna go completely, not you know far offshore from what you're already doing, but just a revamping of your presentation, not only with your music or with your new members or with whoever, just having that mindset to where you can do that. You don't have to live your life in 2001 and here it is 2013. You know, you can rebuild 2013 the way you broke it off in 2001. You know, I totally, I totally uh, like what you said about the mirror thing. You know, truthfully, I mean, it's, it's important for people to, to be real, you know, be real with themselves and, and to not get, you know, stuck on that mirror and get, get kind of one-sided so that all you see is yourself. So I mean, it's it it truly is important to be you know, you know, real with yourself and be you know, don't don't kid yourself, you know. Ultimately, I think what makes the best art is those who actually test what they have to really put it on a grilling fire, instead of the wash, rinse, repeat of I'm going to attack this one would be Godsmack, where every band, oh, every song sounds the same. It's wash, rinse, repeat. And honestly, it loses that grinding appeal when you really test the medium and you really put it under the fire to see what was good about it or not and where you can push it. 